And we got a massive AMD uh, update here. Let's start off with the 32 core Ryzen Threadripper 9975WX and 24 core 9965WX Shimada Peak has been spotted. This is from video cards. Uh, what we got here? It's going to have a 350 watt TDP. NB and AMD hasn't said anything about the upcoming Threadripper in any of their latest rumors, but we knew that the we know that the product is called Shimada Peak. It's set to feature Zen 5 and the same socket and TDP. Although it may seem obvious, the names were not confirmed until now. It turns out that OEM shipping manifests already list two of the upcoming models, mind you, not the flagship SKUs. Uh, the 9965WX, presumably the Pro version, will feature 24 cores, uh, an SP6 socket support, and a TDP of 350 watts. The 9975WX will, will be a 32-core variant with the same specs. Unfortunately, no details on clock speed, uh, nor any part more than 32 cores. However, these were, shipped, these were seen in shipping manifests months ago, so it's only a matter of time before we see a 9985WX and a 9995WX, although it'll take some time to get used to some of these names. My God, what tongue twisters they are. AMD also hasn't confirmed uh, about a release date, hasn't confirmed the series, hasn't confirmed these CPUs in existence, and of course, mums the word on 3D Vcash. So there's that. There's also this. AMD has reportedly enforced a biased distribution of the 9070 series among their AIBs, where XFX, Pine Technology, of course, own, uh, owns the XFS or XFX, and power color receiving a much higher allocation. Well, this is to be expected. They've been with, uh, they've been AMD exclusive partners, oh, for like a decade and a half. So this isn't surprising if, for those of us paying attention and doing our homework and uh, being used to the situation and AM gaming on AMD systems for 15, 20 years. Uh, the biggest issue with modern day G food launches was most likely the supply, according to this is what the article is saying. Uh, given that both NVIDIA and uh, AMD current gen models, we saw massive demand, which wasn't enough to sustain inventory levels. In light of this, manufacturers had to take strict measures. And in case of AMD, it is reported that the firm divided its AIBs into two different factions, one of them getting the far less allocation compared to the other. While this is quite common, the way the AIBs are divided is pretty interesting. Uh, according to a report by the board channels, it is claimed one of the AIB groups is said to be core AMD partners, with them being responsible for a significant portion of the supply of the 9070 GPU series. The major difference between the two factions is their G GPU allocation numbers. And while we are unaware of how AMD has differentiated out their AIBs, it is likely through their popularity, range of custom models, and regional preference, presence. But let's not ignore also legacy, how long and how loyal and how exclusive they've been with AMD. Um... They got a little screenshot here. I'm not going to read, but the core AMD partners include Sapphire, Pine Technology, the owners of FX, uh, XFX. That's why I say Pine Technology because that thing is hard to pronounce. Uh, ASUS Power Color and uh, Vast Armor. These names are quite popular globally, but they have far greater presence in Chinese markets, which is one of the reasons why they received greater importance from Team Red. The second group includes. Uh, AIBs like Acer, Yeston, Gigabyte, ASRock. These firms are likely here due to their lesser range of RDNA for custom models, and none of them are exclusive to AMD, like XFX and PowerColor. So for those in the retail market looking for an, a 9070 series GPU, there's a higher chance that you can get models from the more important uh, AMD board partners and AIBs. Moreover, uh, with Team Red's selective rebate system, 
you might find models from those firms at MSRP. <sighs> but I got a bad, I got, I got, I got, I got a, uh, I got a fly in the ointment coming up. Next one, this is, this, this, this is nice news right here. I mean, it's good and bad. So take it with a grain of salt. AMD reportedly shipped 200,000 Radeon 9070 graphics cards already. From video cards, Benchlife, who attended the AIPC Summit in Beijing, is reporting that the initial launch stock of the Radeon RX 9070 series was almost sold out. The site reports that 200,000 graphics cards have been shipped to date. However, keep in mind that this figure is not labeled as an officially presented number by AMD, but rather something that Benchlife just reports themselves. The number of cards shipped doesn't reflect units sold. There's still cards on the market, but due to inflated pricing, they are comfortably sitting on shelves without much attention from buyers. This situation is unlikely to change in the near future as those who wanted to buy an RDNA 4 GPU at a higher price have already done so. Now the majority are waiting for the promised MSRP models. If AMD already shipped 200,000 units, then the company has supplied inventory worth of 110 million U.S. dollars, uh, assuming that's assuming 9070 at MSRP and 120 million. If we assume the 9070 XT at M at, M at MSRP overall, AMD claims to be powering as many as 500 million gamers around the world right now. This includes laptops, handhelds, gaming consoles, Ryzen PCs, and even Tesla cars that use RDNA two GPUs uh, for gamers to see any difference in the market in terms of pricing. AMD probably needs to ship thousands more units to each of the larger, larger retailers. Even better if they can figure out how, the confusing rebate system, which is the main reason for the disparity in prices between retailers. But it's not the sole reason. It's greed. Greed is definitely <laughs> got a fly in the ointment because uh, this is this is the this is a fly in the ointment. This is kind of the good and bad thing concerning what I wanted to do with my, with my system with Edna here, where I debated about getting a 9070 XT to replace the GRE and then wondering if I'm going to sell the GRE. And of course I need a white one. Power color steps up to the plate with a 9070 XT red devil spectral white. It has leaked. It's a nice looking card. All right. I definitely want the card. Don't need it. Just, I just want it. But the price. Hmm. Let me scroll further here. Uh, the article continues. Remember when we told you that Power Color is set to launch a white edition of the Red Devil? Well, it seems like a crazy idea at the time because the company never made such design. They did, however, launch a Hellhound Spectral White. And these cards are shipping to gamers as we speak in small numbers. And you'll see why. Turns out Red Devil Spectral White was already leaked by Amazon. The retailer had posted pictures of the card today, confirming that the, this model is indeed coming. Worth adding that this is even before Power Color has acknowledged plans for such a card. From the photos, we learned that this model would feature an all-white design. And it's a proper all white model, meaning not just the cooler shroud is white, but the LEDs are white, the heat sink is painted white, the IO bracket, and even the PCB is white. To be honest, there are there are many white uh, graphics cards on the market, but board partners rarely go this far. Based on the information, this card should feature the exact same clocks as the black slash red red double. So expect up to 3.6 gigahertz boost and uh, TDP is around 340 watts out of the box. The only difference that I can tell is the lack of a limited edition, which is exclusively distributed at launch and among reviewers. One should not expect any performance difference between the variants. It's just a new color scheme. 
one can find a card already listed by some retailers and it looks like it currently will cost $8.99 or $9.29 depending on where you look. <sighs> I'm sorry. Now I'm going to get off on a rant now. Um, the reason... I of course, there's the, of course, the issue with the rebate plates a factor. Okay. All of these are factors, but we got to look in the mirror. We got to blame the son of a bitch in the mirror for these prices. Why? We reward them when we buy them at these inflated prices. As I said in the previous video, I am not even considering replacing my GRE, my white GRE, uh, 7,900 whether a 9070 XT white model, unless I get it at MSRP. I am done playing this game where I pay more for the premium for a white freaking GPU. And here we have a inflated white GPU from PowerColor for $900, maybe a thousand, depending on how much it's gonna get scalped. Ridiculous. And we need to look in the mirror. We play a role. Whatever we, whatever we enable reward and sanction with our wallets, we give them permission to do so. There's a market for it. If we aren't the marks, the slubs, the stoops, the marks, the, the, the dumbasses, if we aren't there and we don't exist, they can't get off on this. They, it, it just can't happen. Who are they going to sell it to? They'll let it sit on a darn shelf and let it rot. We learned from the early adopters who bought GPUs and tried to, uh, from, uh, the 4090 series where they thought they could scalp them. And turns out they had to sell them less on eBay from where, what they bought them for just to get rid of them. This is, this is, this is the solution to that problem. We are the reason why we are part of the reason why the scalpers exist and why some of these graphic card companies are already inflating the price above MSRP. And we're rewarding that system. We, re we are financially, if we're willing to buy these expensive models over MSRP, they have no reason to change. They have no real incentive. If they couldn't sell these cards at that price point, it wouldn't happen. And as long as they are, a mar as long as there's slubs, as long as there's marks, as long as there's targets, it's going to keep happening and nothing will change. <sighs> Rant is over. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> like and subscribe to Gonzo Media. We'll see you in the next one.